Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and I'm so excited. One of my favorite people, Ben Azadi, is on the show with Keto Camp, and he has a brand new book out. Hold it up for everyone, Ben. Um, it is called Keto Flex, and we're going to dive into some amazing topics. So welcome, Ben. Chantel, grateful to be back with you. Hi. <laughs> so tell listeners, a, give us a little glimpse of kind of your favorite parts of the book, uh, Keto Flex. Yeah, absolutely. So the book outlines my four pillars, and the four pillars are designed to help you achieve metabolic flexibility. And I teach the, these ancient healing strategies that we have available to us, ketosis, fasting. There's even a chapter about carnivore in there. And there's even a chapter, chapter 12, on how to do keto and fasting specifically for women. So the book outlines the four pillars. And then I go a little bit more custom when we talk about how women should apply this tool. But the goal is to get somebody from being a sugar burner, eating a standard American diet, which is 300 to 400 grams of carbs per day, and get them into ketosis, which is anti-inflammatory. Of course, it's fat burning. It could support the thyroid. It could support so many functions inside of your body. And then we pair that with fasting, which is the second pillar. And there's different fasting strategies in there. After we complete those two pillars, we transition into the carnivore pillar, where we start eliminating plant nutrients and plant toxins and just heal the gut. And at that point, you should be now keto adapted. Then there's a big difference between fat adaption and keto adaption. Fat adaption could take place in seven to 14 days. That just means you're in ketosis. You're burning fat. That's great. But the goal is to get keto adapted. So now your cells and your mitochondria are preferring to use ketones as the primary fuel source. That typically takes eight to 12 weeks. So that's the timeline before we start practicing keto flexing. And the book outlines how to do it, what foods to eat, what foods to stay away from, how to test glucose and ketones. And it's heavily focused on fasting, which I know you love and your audience loves because fasting, when you apply to any nutritional plan, going to upgrade that plan. It doesn't have to be keto. It could be paleo. It could be a vegan diet. So we talk a lot about fasting inside of the book as well. So let me ask you, what does a day in the life of Ben Azadi look like? So for you, what time are you starting to eat? What time are you ending your eating window? And what are you eating on a general yeah. So I typically start the day off with water and, and hydrogen water to be specific with some electrolytes. And then I'll have coffee about an hour and a half after I wake up, I'll put a little bit of some sometimes grass fed butter in my coffee and some MCT oil and some sea salt blended together. That's typically my morning cup of coffee. And that's all I have until the afternoon. Uh, on average, I'll break my fast around 2 PM, 3 PM. I'll typically break it with maybe some macadamia nuts to go low and slow. And then I'll move into like, I love grass fed beef. I do really well with red meat. So I have maybe a piece of steak and some green leafy vegetables and then I'll stop eating. And then I'll eat again around five, five or, or 6 PM and have another big fatty meal, uh, broccoli with grass fed beef, or even sometimes if I'm not doing a keto day, sweet potatoes with uh, maybe some steak or some wild caught fish. So that's a typical day for me. Green leafy vegetables, sweet potatoes, grass-fed beef are usually my go-to. So one of the terms that I love that you say is keto flex. And I think maybe one time we talked about on the podcast, because I kind of say, you know, for me personally, I like to say I eat a keto-ish diet, you know, and what I mean by that is like, it's not, it's definitely not like keto, 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 but I call it keto-ish. So I want you to talk about what is, do you use the term keto-ish or just keto flex? <laughs> I use keto flex, but it sounds okay. like there's a lot of similarities there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So explain to me what you call keto, what is your version of keto flex or keto-ish? Yeah. And I would argue that a lot of people who don't think they're doing keto, but when they do fasting are technically doing keto because fasting yes. is a great way to get into ketosis. As you know, my, my definition of keto flexing is getting your body fat adapted, burning fat, and then flexing in and out of ketosis. And the way that I came up with this is studying our ancestors, right? And I don't think we should do everything our ancestors did, but 
we're genetically hardwired to practice these ancient healing strategies. Ketosis, for example, keto technically is not even a diet. It's a metabolic process. And every single one of our ancestors, they were in ketosis because their environment kind of forced them into ketosis. Fast forward to this day and age, we have a keto deficiency with the standard American diet. So it's just a way to get you into ketosis. And then we don't want to stay there because our ancestors didn't stay in ketosis long-term. They flexed in and out. And that's where the definition of keto flex comes into play. It's more sustainable. You could enjoy yourself. You could still get the benefits of keto, but still go to that wedding or go to that event and get yourself out and then build up this metabolism so you could flex in and out without a hiccup. And that's the definition in a long answer of keto flex. Hey guys, I'm so excited. My new book, One Meal and a Tasting is out now. And if you order the book on Amazon, just the regular paperback edition, if you go in and make a review, you will get the audio book for free. Send a copy of your receipt to questions at chantalrayway.com and you'll get the audio book right away. So let's talk about kind of cheat days or days where you go, you know what, I am going to have a bunch of carbs. Maybe I'm going to a wedding or I'm going on vacation. What does that look like for you? And how do you train people on that? Yeah. And, and that's a great question because it's realistic, right? Chantel, I mean, it's really difficult to keep yourself in ketosis and stay there for an extended period of time. I'm talking about months and years because we have those events. We have those dinners. We have those get togethers and we want to be able to enjoy ourselves, which I'm totally a fan of. Of course, we want to have healthy carbs. So for me, uh, it's an abundance of fruit. It's it's sometimes ice cream. Yeah, I'll have like some halo top ice cream. Uh, it's going to be sweet potatoes, yam, even white rice I'll have. I do take uh, berberin on those days that I'm having higher carbs. Berberin is a great way to kind of regulate your glucose. So I'll take a couple capsules of berberin on those high carb days. And I, I try to make myself become more active, especially after I eat a big high carbohydrate meal, because the benefits of doing that uh, is tremendous. When you are active either before a big high carb meal or after that meal, you activate AMPK and you activate another process called the GLUT4 transporters, which is gonna take that glucose spike from the meal. And instead of having that being stored as fat and having a big glucose spike when you're active around that meal, it's going to, the GLUT4 transporters are gonna help shuttle that glucose into your cells, your muscle cells and liver cells to be used for energy. So you get less fat storage, more fat burning, and you're able to actually get those carbs and enjoy it without any of the, the consequences. So for me, I like I, I tend to stick to healthy carbohydrates. Uh, it's two things I don't make an exception on. Gluten, I don't do really good with gluten, so I always make sure I'm eating gluten-free and vegetable oils. Everything else I'll make an exception on, but gluten-free and no vegetable oils, and I, I'm gonna feel good. Mm. I love that you said that. I, I feel the same exact way. So. One of the things that you talked about that I wanted to ask you about was the hydrogen water first of what is that? And I want you to expand a little bit more on how women and men are different when it comes to fasting. So if you're coaching somebody who's a woman versus a man, what are kind of those differences? Yeah. So I'll tackle the first question first. Hydrogen water is terrific. It's a great, if you want to call it a biohack, it's, it's water that has been infused with hydrogen. Hydrogen is the first element on the periodic table. And it's uh, there because it's very small. And, and the reason that's a benefit is because the fact that it's such a small element it has the ability to cross your cell membranes. And it's been called a selective antioxidant. So it could turn on longevity genes and downregulate bad genes. So it helps with inflammation. There's also over a thousand studies a combination of human and animal studies, but over a thousand studies currently on hydrogen water, how it helps with type two diabetes, how it stimulates ghrelin. So it helps actually with your brain and, and uh, mental clarity and mental performance. It also could help with your gut function. So I drink hydrogen water first thing in the morning and throughout the day, I also give it to my dog. I feel really good. It's also really important to take it when you're traveling. It's going to help with jet lag. It doesn't taste like anything, but uh, I know that it's doing some good things. And there's some great studies out there. If you just go on PubMed or these, these websites to kind of see what hydrogen is doing for you. So it's a selective antioxidant. And that's why I love it. Um, the next question was about how should women do fasting differently than men? As you know, and you teach this, 
it should be done differently. Uh, men have a 24 hour hormone cycle and women who are menstruating have a 28 day hormonal cycle and postmenopausal women have a different cycle as well. So those three people, different types of people, different types of uh, balancing hormones should do a different type of approach. Men could get away with more aggressive fasting protocols because we have that 24 hour period where our hormones are kind of um, recycling, if you will. And that's why a lot of men, as you probably have seen, get faster results when they do fasting and keto because they could be more aggressive. They don't have to worry about their menstrual cycle or their ovaries are shut down. So their adrenals are picking up the slack. We don't have to worry about that. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Now, a, men a menstruating woman, so a woman who has a monthly cycle, the, the most important week to pay attention to is the five to seven days before the period. So it's recommended that you track your cycle. And if you know your period is gonna come in seven days from now, those seven days preceding your period is the seven days you don't wanna to do too much fasting because you wanna build progesterone. And progesterone is that hormone that tells you everything's all right, you're calm, and it helps keep estrogen in check. Those two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, are typically very low the seven days before the period. And if you do a lot of fasting and a lot of keto, you will deplete those hormones even further, which will lead to cravings during that week for carbohydrates and sugar. And it could lead to an irregular cycle, heavy menstrual cycle. So the best time to practice fasting is not that week. We want to maybe cap our fasting schedule, not beyond 14 hours, those seven days. Once your period starts, you have your full bleed. That week is the best week to be more aggressive with your fasting schedule. If you want to do a 48-hour fast, that would be the week to do it. If you want to do a block fast, three or more days, that will be the week to do it because your hormone, you're, you're doing it according to your, your cycle. Uh, so that's the menstruating women. Now, the postmenopausal women, you still want to have a balance because uh, fasting is a stress to the body. And it's a great stress that forces the body to adapt and great things happen, which is called hormesis. But when a woman is now postmenopausal, the ovaries have retired. They've said, you know, peace out. I've done my work. So the ovaries shut down and now the adrenal glands pick up the slack. So this is the time you want to do a lot of methods to kind of master your stress. And if you do a lot of fasting at this time, it could tax your adrenals, especially if your stress bucket is overflowing. So you do want to balance out your fasting and your feasting during your postmenopausal phase. And how you could simply do that is maybe just throw in, if you're doing like an 18 hour fast every day, Maybe you just have one day per week where you don't do any fasting and you just reset things and you have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Of course, in the book, Keto Flex, I go a little bit deeper and I give you a week by week breakdown. But in general, those are the ways to, to do it, men versus women. Let's talk about if people are in a rut, because I do get some emails all the time that are like, you know, I've lost a bunch of weight and now I'm in a little bit of a rut. What are some things that they can do to kind of give them a jolt of like extreme weight loss where they can kind of feel like, okay, I need like that little boost right now to get me on the right track? Yeah, I get those emails too. I'm sure somebody listening <laughs> is like, yeah, what's the answer here? <laughs> Well, the first thing is to revisit the fundamentals of health and make sure those are, are rock solid. And that's going to be sleep. You, you, your body burns most of its fat burning hormones are activated, I should say, during delta stage four deep sleep. So you want to make sure you're getting good quality sleep. And I would I would quantify that as you know seven to nine hours of quality sleep. Maybe you're using a sleep tracker to make sure you're getting enough REM sleep and deep sleep. I use the Aura Ring. So it's not just the total amount of sleep you're getting, but the quality. It's that deep delta sleep where you're activating a lot of your fat burning hormones, the brain is detoxifying. So make sure you're getting quality sleep. If you hit a plateau, you're in a rut, look at your sleep. And if it's not optimal, work on your sleep. Number two, which is another fundamental of health is your stress. How are your stress levels? Is your job just creating so much stress in your life, relationships, finances, find ways to filter that stress into positive energy. It's easier said than done, but we want to make sure we're mastering that stress. Once you got that down pat, then we want to focus on movement, not necessarily exercise. Exercise is great, but movement. So may, maybe you make it a goal to get 10,000 steps every single day. 
And even the best thing to do after eating a meal is actually to go for a walk. It's going to help you with fat loss. It's going to help with that postprandial glucose. So maybe adopt the habit of a 10 to 15 minute walk after your meals and aim to get 10,000 steps per day. Now, let's say you're doing all that and you're still in a rut. The next thing to do is to mix it up. Just like a great personal trainer that you hire is always going to change up the workout for you. What would happen if he, he gave you the same workout routine every single week? You would get, begin to plateau and you would be in a rut. So a smart personal trainer knows, I want to keep the body guessing. I want to keep the body adapting. This week, we're going to do high rep and low weight. The next week, we're going to do low rep and high weight. And we're going to change the workouts. We're going to hit different angles. So it's the same thing with your fasting schedule. I'm not a big fan of having the same schedule every single day. I like to mix things up. So if you're doing 16, eight every single day of a fast, maybe you want to throw in a 24 hour fast once per week, or maybe you want to change that to 18, six instead of a 16, eight, or maybe you're doing too much fasting and you want to have a couple of days where you're not fasting. So that's a, a perfect example right there. Mix it up and change it up. And if you're doing keto, it might be a time to start flexing out or just change your foods that you're eating. Every time you change, the body has to adapt. This is called hormesis. And it creates a positive stress because good cells get stronger when you force a stress and bad cells don't adapt. So it's like survival of the fittest. So that would be my recommendation for those in a rut and focus on health, not necessarily weight loss. The body needs to get healthy to lose the weight, not necessarily lose weight to get healthy. So obviously my first choice is for someone to fast and not eat anything. But if you are really struggling and you need another solution, I want to tell you about a product that I saw. And when I first saw it, I was like, what in the world? This makes no sense. You can't fast by eating a bar. But I do want you to know that a lot of people kind of get stuck and they need a little bit of a crutch. And we all know that fasting can be a huge challenge because you are A, hungry. You've got a dip in energy. You're going to get hangry at times. And so there is this bar. It's called the fast bar. It's the only bar scientifically formulated for intermittent fasting. It's non-GMO, gluten-free, you know, no soy, no dairy, all those good things. It's keto friendly. You can use it if you're doing keto, if you're doing low carb or plant-based or gluten-free, whatever you want to do, it works for. They've got a bunch of different flavors. My favorite is the blueberry acai. So the bars are available at Sprouts, at fastbar.com and and at Amazon. And if you use the code WASTEAWAY, you'll get an additional 10% off the already discounted products at fastbar.com. I want you to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of alternate day fasting. We've been getting a lot of questions lately about kind of people doing full days where like they might be eating one day and then they are fasting completely the next day. What are some of the pros and cons of that for you? Yeah. I mean, that's going to work, especially in the beginning. Uh, if you eat your regular diet, you made no nu nutritional changes, but you did like what Chantel just said, one day of regular eating, maybe three to five meals a day of a standard American diet. And then one day of a fast, you'll get benefits from that. No doubt. Now, the cons of that is somebody is not changing what they're actually eating during their eating window. Ideally, we want to pair fasting with a healthy eating schedule as well. Another con could be it could be too excessive, especially if you're not timing it to your cycle, especially if you have a lot of stress. We don't want to practice too much fasting if we're not getting quality sleep and if we're stressed out because fasting, like I mentioned, is already a stress to the body. But if you have too much stress and you're adding more stress, it'll make your stress bucket overflow. The perfect analogy is a great analogy from my mentor, Dr. Pampa. He gives the example of, yeah, it's important to apply stressors and, and have the body adapt. But if your bucket is full and you're applying too much stress, like if you're not getting quality sleep and you're doing too much fasting, it's like having a full cup of water and you start to shake it. So you're applying that stress, that water is going to overflow. What we want to do is deplete that cup of water, deplete your stress bucket, and then you could start rattling it a little bit more with more aggressive fasting. So those are the pros and cons. I love that alternate day fasting, but how much stress do you have? And it's always important to mix things up. So maybe you do that for a month and then you change things up to a different schedule. What are some of your kind of favorite products for fasting? 
fasting and keto? Do you have any that you're like, you know, this really helps me take it to the next level? The hydrogen water for sure. And it could be either like a machine you use. I have a machine or it could be those tablets, but uh, hydrogen water could help support autophagy, which is that cellular repair and cleanup during fasting. Electrolytes are very, very important. Getting those minerals in. There's a few uh, brands and companies that I use, but I mean, using electrolytes during your fast is great. And then binders could help, especially if somebody's really toxic. If they have a lot of toxicity, as, as you know, toxins get stored in your body fat. And that's a survival mechanism that the body has adopted over the years, which is really amazing. Your body is so smart, it wants to survive. So when toxins enter the body from breathing, eating, and touching your skin, the body activates a pathway called PPARY, and it shuttles those toxins away from your vital organs into your fat cells. It actually could enlarge fat cells or even sometimes create new fat cells for those toxins to go live in because toxins love fat. When you're fasting, especially longer fast, you're going to start to burn body fat, shrink fat cells, and release those fat cells, which is terrific. But if you have a lot of toxins, you'll dump these toxins and the body cannot burn toxins, but it could burn back uh, fat cells. So you might feel like crap during a fast, especially a longer fast. So binders could be a great thing that you take to help eliminate some of those toxins that are being released. So those are a few things. If you want to take your fasting to a next level, hydrogen water, electrolytes, and some really quality binders could really enhance your fasting results. Let's talk about that a little bit more because I think I don't think we've emphasized that enough as a fasting community, because for me, what I've realized, like on days where maybe I have taken a lot of magnesium, maybe I've taken a binder, maybe I've um, just really had a lot of elimination for whatever reason, the way that I feel on those days is completely different. And so like, I don't know... I don't know if this has ever happened to you and this is kind of gross, but we can talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about it. But like about 30 to 45 minutes before I have to poop, I I already know, like maybe it's, it's even th- probably like 15 to 30 minutes, but I start feeling bad almost. And it, it's, it's kind of like the toxins are building up too much. And then let's say I go poop and then it's like, I feel like a new woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that what happens is a lot of times people fast and then part of it is that they've got all this buildup. They're feeling really bad and they don't realize that elim- how important elimination is that it then has you feel bad. And then you think, oh, it's the fasting that's making you feel bad instead of, okay, I've no, I've got to eliminate. That's the real problem. Can you expand on that at all? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of people have a lot of toxins. We live in the most toxic world than ever before. And we bioaccumulate these toxins. Like I said, a lot of them are stored in your fat cells. So fasting is not necessarily the problem here. It's the fact that you have a lot of toxins and you don't have a protocol in place. So having a protocol in place is essential. And you want to make sure that you're eliminating during your fast because that's a great way to eliminate some of those toxins. Sweating is also a great way to do it. Urination is a great way to do it. Something, another little hack that just came to mind is uh, like a castor oil pack during your fast. That could be terrific where you just add a little pack around your liver, but the castor oil, you sleep in that, That'll help detoxify your liver, and that should also help you feel better during the fast. The body will adapt, and as you get those toxins out, you're going to feel so much better. Like you just said, Chantel, after you eliminate, you feel so much better. So I wouldn't necessarily blame it on the fasting. I would blame it on a lack of structure. So having these tools and just being aware of it, maybe you start to incorporate one or two things we're mentioning here. Maybe you incorporate it all. I believe it'll make a big difference for your fasting schedule and for your results. And you just feel better in general, because we want to make sure we're eliminating a lot of these toxins that have are accumulated in our fat cells. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Dr. Marisol is one of my favorite people on earth and she has an amazing castor oil uh, pack. And if you go back and listen to one of our episodes, she's been on the podcast at least twice, maybe three times. And every time she brings such a wealth of knowledge, look up her podcast on our show. Um, but, but that is so, so important. So 
let's talk about some of those. More. I want you to expand on those a little bit more. Is there like a favorite brand of a binder that you use? So we've talked about castor oil packs, which is really great. We've talked about getting in the sauna. That's an elimination tool. What what particular brands of binders or any other tricks or hacks have you learned to get rid of those toxins in your body so you can fast longer? I actually use uh, a, a company called Systemic Formulas, and they they created a fasting trio. It's called the Fasting Trio, and Dr. Pompa actually helped formulate it. So what's included in the Fasting Trio, which is designed to help you feel good during a fast, there's a bottle of the hydrogen water tablets that's called Fast Tonic. So that's the first supplement. There's also a binder called True Carbon Cleanse in there. There's another binder called Bind as well. Uh, so either one's good, but True Carbon Cleanse is in there. And the third one is Cyto Detox, which is another binder, helps your cells detoxify toxins. So these are three supplements. They don't break the fast. They help support the fast. And it's called the Fasting Trio. Uh, on Revelation Health is where I get it from. Hey guys, I really want you to join our Intermittent Fasting and OMAD Facebook group. We're doing tons of giveaways right now for posting your before and after pictures and just for posting a question in there. We're giving away free protein shakes, some digest aid, all kinds of fun stuff. So please join our Intermittent Fasting and OMAD Facebook group. The link is in the show notes. Okay. And I am going to, I think I, the one thing I have not tried yet is I have not tried that hydrogen water. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to go buy a machine on Amazon to make my own hydrogen water. Do you have a specific brand that you love? Yeah. I use the one from Synergy Science. They make a great one called Echo. Uh, I, inter okay. I interviewed their founder, Paul Baratero, who is one of the leading researchers on hydrogen water. I could introduce him to you if you want. Yeah, uh, that'd so, be great. Yeah. I'll make an e email introduction. So they make a great product called Synergy Science Echo. Mm, I love it. I'm going to totally do it. So anything that I haven't asked you that you want listeners to know about ketosis or keto-ish or keto flex or anything we haven't already discussed? Yeah, you do a good job at, at delivering the tools that people need, like actionable steps, what to eat, how to fast, castor oil packs, all these biohacks. Something that I want to add to the conversation is how important it is to inner size before you exercise meaning a lot of people self-sabotage themselves because of their stinking thinking. Uh, and it's so important to have the right mindset going into your new game plan for your health. Because if you have that stinking thinking, I've been saying, if you're thinking is stinking, your dreams are shrinking. So when you, a lot of people have these self-limiting beliefs that are holding them back and they self-sabotage themselves. So for me, what has been a game changer for my health and what I teach to all of my Keto Camp Academy students is the practice of gratitude. It's a simple practice that when you do it intentionally every single day will upgrade your fasting schedule. It'll upgrade the supplements you're taking. It'll upgrade everything you're doing because what we appreciate will begin to appreciate in value. And there's a part of the brain called the reticular activation system, RAS, Whatever you feed that part of the brain, it's going. you're going to see more of what you're feeding it. And that's a universal law. Perfect example is if you wanted to buy a new car, let's say you're looking for a red Tesla. So you are on the internet looking at red Teslas and you finally make the decision to go to the dealership to buy your red Tesla. You purchase your beautiful red Tesla, you're driving it off the lot, you're driving home and you notice a red Tesla passes by you and you think, oh, that's weird. I just bought one. There's one that just passed by me. You thought it was coincidence. And then you're driving home and you're at a stoplight and you see another red Tesla right beside you. And you think, that's weird. That's two red Teslas in 30 minutes. And ever since you bought the car, weeks after, you're seeing red Teslas everywhere. Now, did they everybody buy red Teslas because you bought the red Tesla? Or are you now more aware that these red Teslas are all around you? It, of course, it's the latter. You're more aware of it. You've filtered out and activated that reactive um, reticular activation system. How do you relate this to your results? Well, when you feed yourself gratitude and do affirmations and say, I'm healthy and I appreciate my beautiful body, I appreciate the healing that's occurring, you're feeding that reticular activation system. So when you see an 
obstacle, the obstacle turns into an opportunity because you're making that switch. So I highly recommend you become aware of the thoughts you're thinking, develop a gratitude practice, surround yourself with winners, surround yourself with people who also want to be healthy because your environment is important. And as you do this, you get better and your health starts to improve. But if you don't do it, it's going to be very difficult to get the results that you desire. So that would be my final thing that I would add to the conversation. Inner size every single day and you take care of the inside and the outside takes care of itself automatically. I love that. And, you know, one of the quotes that I say is that bad habits are bad masters. And what I mean by that is we tend to start bad habits out of a desire to have personal freedom, right? We want to do whatever we want. Like, I don't want to have to eat this way. I want to eat whatever I want. So it's like, if you start roaming around looking for something sweet and then say, I'm going to do it, then we end up with less freedom because then we're mastered by sugar or something else. And it's like, yes, I have the right to do everything, but everything is not beneficial. And so creating habits, you know, I love Charles Duhigg and he refers to it as the habit loop. Yeah, It can feel like, you know, it's endless and impossible to escape. And so you, you feel like you're stuck in that habit, making those same mistakes over and over. And it goes back to, you know, this balance, because I love what you said, if you get too regimented, and you're like, I'm only eating in this, you know, small window, then it's like that trainer that just, you know, does the same thing every day, you want to change it up. But it doesn't necessarily mean, for me, I know one thing that I get into a rut is where I go, I justify it, like, I don't want to live my life where I'm not having all this sugar. But at the same time, I have to know for me, it's like sugar begat sugar begat sugar. It doesn't do well for me. I have to just say, I can. Ha- this is what I know I can have that I don't get out of control with. And it's kind of finding that that balance for each person, but reminding them yourself that, hey, I have the ability to do this, but it it doesn't mean that that is. I don't want this to master my life and, and getting rid of some of those bad habits. That's just really holding us back. Well said, that's what it's about. It's the flexibility. Uh, so I agree a hundred percent in that book, Charles Duhigg, Duhigg's book, he talks about giving yourself uh, cues, right. And, and setting things up around your household to kind of cue you to do that activity. For example, if you want to run in the morning, instead of waking up, and you know, figuring out what shoes you're going to wear, what outfit you're going to wear. You you cue to your by ha- doing this before the night before. You grab your shoes, grab your shorts, grab your outfit, and put it on the counter on your desk or on your nightstand, and it cues to you. Okay, I said I was going to run, and it makes it much easier to transition into that habit. And it doesn't happen overnight. We just want to get a little bit better every single day. And as you do that, these habits start to stack, and these small little tweaks will lead to giant peaks. I really believe that. You know, I love the the one thing that is to me, I have to remind myself is that people overestimate and underestimate different things. Meaning what people do is they go, they underestimate how making these good decisions. So they'll, they'll think in their mind, oh, I fasted this week and I only ate in an eight hour window. Then the next day, they overcompensate for that and go, okay, I'm going to just eat whatever I want and da, 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 da. And then maybe the next day they go back and they eat in a six-hour eating window. But then for the next four days, they're eating, you know, in a really long window, eating whatever they want. But then in their mind, they're like, I fasted two days this week. I guess fasting doesn't work for me. And that's where I'm seeing people who are in a rut the most, where they're justifying the things they're doing wrong. And they're they're basically going, but I did fast this week and nothing happened. Guess that doesn't work for me. Have you seen something like that happen? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's the victim mindset and we're not calling anybody out. We're calling them up 
it's the victim mindset. I've been there myself. You, 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 it's, it's easy to justify it because then you don't have to take responsibility and it's easier to do that way. But the reality is this, if you want to change your health and change your life, it starts with the responsibility. It starts with ownership and that's changed my life. And your responsibility is your ability to respond to life. So it's not a matter of putting one foot forward and two steps back, which is sounds exactly what like somebody's doing that fasting protocol and then eating like crap. It's a matter of small tweaks, gradually improvement, improvements every single week. So if you did two days of intermittent fasting this week and five days of no fasting, then next week do three days of intermittent fasting and four days of no fasting. So it's the people who don't do that, who blame the fasting. They blame that it doesn't work and, Ben and Chantel are full of it. This is, you know, a whole bunch of snake oil sales talk here. But the reality is it works. You got to take responsibility and you got to tweak it and you got to just get better and improve every single week. And as you do that, your life will change. But the trick is this. Don't focus on the number on the scale. Focus on health. Focus on non-scale victories. And eventually, as you get healthier, you'll get to the desired weight that you want to get to on the scale. But if you're just looking at the number on the scale, because I'm sure you see this all the time, oh, I fasted and I lost three pounds and then I stopped fasting and I gained it all back. Well, the body is going to lose water weight, which is going to show on the scale. But you got healthier during that fast. You got autophagy, you got your gut reset. So keep focusing on the health and eventually you'll get to that desired weight. And, And that would be my advice for that person. Hey guys, I'd love for you guys to listen to a podcast that we did about the side effects from wine and the differences between natural wine and traditional wine. So go to ChantelRayway.com slash wine and you'll see transcripts, you'll see some different episodes, but here's the thing. You can get your penny bottle now of dry farm wines and make the decision that if you're gonna have wine to make sure you have the most natural, healthy wine in the world with no ad additives, only natural ingredients. All the other wines out there have so much sulfate, so much sugar. Why put that poison in your body? So get your penny bottle now at ChantelRayWay.com slash wine. And I think the other thing is people, they don't see progress fast enough. So they might've walked on the treadmill three times this week. They ended up gaining two pounds. So they kind of go, oh, then they wrongly conclude that the small good decisions don't matter that much. Right. Yeah. So then they, they, they have small, like, let's say they ate a half a box of chocolates and they didn't gain any weight. So then they wrongly conclude that the small bad decisions don't matter that much. Right. And so our life is really a sum total of all the small decisions that we make. And it's reminding ourselves that, you know, I love the analogy about, you know, hot water, right? So like if you heat up water and it's 80 degrees, then it goes to 140 degrees. It's still not boiling. 205, it's still not boiling. 211 degrees, it's hot, but it's still not boiling. You know, 212 is where it gets to boiling. And, you know, people, when they don't see overnight success is what they don't see is like, it, you don't, it takes time to get to the boiling water, right? You've got to, you got to get to that place. And, you know, the, the people who they don't see the results fast enough are the people who always fail because you have to trust the process and, you know, create systems in your life. I love the quote that, um, James Clear has, and he says something like, you don't, you don't just, it's something about systems. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's something about you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems and Mm. creating systems. And that's why I love fasting so much because it's just a huge pillar of one of the systems that I've created. And so, you know, for me, I do the, a meal and a tasting each day. And that's why I wrote that book, One Meal and a Tasting, because that's a system that I know I can consistently do every single day. I have a little something so that I don't get so crazy hungry that tasting does that for me, but it's a system that 
that works. And it's finding that system that works for you that you can consistently do day in, day out, and be able to take your life to the next level. That's right. Structure trumps intention. So find a structure, system, same thing, and follow that system. So important. It's important to have a coach. It's important to have that structure. That'll get you there even faster. Last thing on this topic is when when your why is clear, why you want to get healthier, then your how becomes that much more easier. So get clear on your why. Where is it showing up in your life right now? Maybe you don't have energy for your husband. You don't have energy for your wife. You don't have energy for your grandkids. Get clear on your why and remind yourself why you're doing this. Because Chantel's right. It's the microwave thinking that will lead you towards frustration. It's, you know, you don't, it doesn't happen overnight. (laughs) It takes time, but that doesn't mean you won't get better in a day. It doesn't mean you won't see improvements in seven days. But to get that transformation you're seeking, think about how many years it took for you to get to this point in dealing with the symptoms you're dealing with. It takes time to overcome that, but the body can overcome that. The body is very amazing. It's, it has an innate intelligence that could go to work for you and really help you heal, it's, but it's not going to happen overnight. So get clear on your why, develop or, or go in, plug into a system and just stick with it. And as you stick with it, you'll get the results that you desire. I love it because you can change your life by the changing the stories that you tell yourself. And Ben, you are an amazing coach. I'd love for you to tell listeners how they can find you, how they can follow you, and how they can get your coaching. Thank you, Chantel. Uh, you're so right. Change the story. Create a better story. We're making all the stories up. Why not make a better story up? Um, the best place to reach me would be my website, bennazadi.com. On there, you'll see my social media. You'll see my Academy. If you want to learn about keto and fasting, you'll see everything you need to learn from me over at benazadi.com. I love it. I love it. Um, You guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.